One of the things we need to do to our laser right up front is install what is called a milliamp reader. Here's the milliamp reader. It will tell us the amps that it's actually drawing from the laser. All right, so we're at the back of the laser. We're gonna raise this up. This is going to give us access to the laser. And you can see we have a wire down here, which is the output. This is where the water will flow out. We have a black wire, thinner gauge. And if you follow up to the other side of the tube, this is the input. We have a thick red input. We're not gonna mess with the red. If we mess with that one that's high voltage, we'll kill ourselves. We're gonna make sure we're unplugged from all power right now. We've actually been unplugged for probably two days now. So we know that there's no power flowing through this. We're gonna follow this black wire down and we can see it runs along the tube all the way over here. And it comes in on the side right where the black and red wires come in. And that's coming from the power supply. So we're gonna follow that down. We're gonna go over to the other side, open the panel and let's look in there. All right, so we're at the laser and we're following those down through the channel. And we're coming on to the side of the panel. This is where the laser is and the wires are coming down. We're gonna open the side panel. All right, so our wires are right here. You can see we have the big thicker red, that's the positive, and then the thinner black. I have a second black one over here, but I added that. That's the USB cable for the camera for our software. So I know this is the only other one. It's going to this box, which is the power supply for the laser alone. This box is the power supply for all the electronics. So we have the positive that's going out to the laser up here, which we're not going to touch at all. We have this negative. I slid this over to the side so we can see all the wires. Then the negative right here. We're going to have to splice into this wire. So we'll go ahead and make a cut and then we'll get our milliamp meter where I'll attach a uh, wire to one side and wire to the other. We'll splice into this wire and then we'll splice back out to this wire. So it'll just run along this wire essentially like this and that will give us milliamp readings. But first we're gonna attach this to our laser. I'm gonna attach it to the front. I'll show you how we do that. We're gonna drill a hole and then attach this and we will be good. So let's attach this milliamp reader to the front so we know how long the cable we need. All right, so we're on the front of the machine. We know we wanna install this milliamp reader somewhere around here. I'm thinking we're gonna put it right at this panel. When I look around and check, if I lift this up, and I just looked back through, made sure that there was no cables or anything in the way. I have a cable running over here that's going to all these, so we're gonna stall it right in the center. So what I wanna do is find that measurement and look kind of where it is, and then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna see the inset right here, this bigger circle. So I'm gonna take the caliper and I'm gonna measure that circle. So I know that's exactly how big of a circle I need to use and cut out. So we're at 48.75 and in inches, that's one and 59 64th. So we're gonna probably go a little bit bigger than that. And then um, we're gonna cut a hole and then we'll inset this. We're not gonna we're not gonna use this as our center because you can see kind of it's uh, a little lower. So we're gonna use, kind of find our center there, make our center hole, and then we'll sit it in here. We'll also have to drill out some holes for the bolts that are gonna go through and hold it onto this. So we'll do our big circle first and then line up these two bolts. All right, so we got our hole cut and the two little holes to hold these uh, bolts. So they're just aligned like that. It'll fit in flush so we know where we're going. So now we need some wire to go through here and down along the side to our power. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the grounding wire that came with the machine. It's thick enough gauge and it's extra wire. We don't need grounding in the United States since it's done through the plug. All right, you can see our plug right there. We're gonna pull back and we're gonna go down along this way with our wire and down through the hole right here. And then we're gonna travel underneath to all of our cabling. All right, we'll come down through here, we'll go through the cable, and then we'll attach over here to this black cable. So I just folded the cable in half, 
It looks like that's going to be a perfect length to go. So we'll cut the cable in half that came with it. And then we'll put a uh, end on either one, a crimping style, and attach it to our meter. All right, so I'm just going to take my wire cutters, cut it. Now I have two the same length. So I have these little ends, terminal ends, circles. We're going to go ahead and put them on to this wire. So we're going to cut the wire down at the end, just a tiny bit. Strip the wire on both ends. So where we get bare wire, then we're going to slip the terminals in and get that bare wire going through the hole. These terminals are a little small for the gauge wire, but we get it through the hole. You can see it's coming out through this right here. Then we're just going to take our pliers again and we're just going to crimp them that terminal right on. All right, so we're crimped on the end. Now we're just going to attach this to the inside and the back of the multimeter on these two little deals right here. And we're going to hold it on there with the nuts and washers that was supplied with the multimeter. All right, so we got our wires coming out with our terminals. So we're going to come up here and here's our terminal right there. All right, so we're going to put these locking flat ones down that came with it. All right, we're ready. Now we can go ahead and place this inside, just like that. We'll line up the holes here. And now our milliamp reader is on the front. And we still have some more. So we're gonna do some locking, some washers, and then some locking washers, and then the nuts, and that'll hold them down this thing down on the inside, which I can't film because it's too small. Just know that I'm gonna secure this thing now inside. All right, so we've got the milliamp on front. It's flushed onto there so we can see. I ran the wire through and now it's coming down. So right now I'm gonna run the wire. I'm gonna run the wire up in here, run it across, and then we'll splice into this black one with the extra wire over here. And then we're going to splice a little bit, cut the wiring up one side. That one. Do that one. All right, so I'm going to use butt connectors. That way I don't need to solder anything. We're just going to use uh, ones that are appropriate. And in this case, I'm going to use the blue. So we'll need two of them. And all we're going to do is fit one end of the black in here, down like so, and then one end of the other wire into the other end. All right, so we got them together. Now I'm just going to squeeze it. And then I'm going to come up here and squeeze this one. And that's our wire together. It's our butt connect. So we're going to do one more. And the yellow from right here. Get them in as far as we can into there. Take it and squeeze. Squeeze this one. Give it an extra squeeze. And that's our connection. So I'm going to do one more safety step. I'm going to get some electrical tape and wrap them up. All 
All right, we got our wires going down and around. They're connected. We got electrical tape around them. I just zip tied it back to the back there just to keep it up out of the way. Um, they're running through here and running through here, so it's all uh, pretty clean. Now we'll just close it up and fire a pulse and see if we got the milliamp running. All right, so we're installed. Now we're ready to fire it up. So we're gonna go ahead and turn everything on. Make sure the water's flowing, everything's on. We're gonna put a piece of wood in there just to shoot a pulse with our pulse button. We're just gonna shoot a quick dot. We're gonna see if the milliamp meter moves. So I'm gonna move the laser head over. So we're over something, it doesn't matter the focus, we're just seeing if it actually gives some amperage. We'll close that up. Our laser button is on. I'm gonna turn the laser on and we're gonna watch as I hit the pulse button up here to see if our milliamp meter actually moves. So here I am and I'm gonna hit pulse and you can see it moved up to five. We're at about 15% power right now, hitting a pulse. We're about, we're at hitting four milliamps shooting a pulse. So we know we got good con conductivity there. We're gonna go back to light burn. We're gonna run a few different test cuts at different powers and we're gonna see when we hit the maximum current for our laser tube. So even though China says this is a 60 watt Orion laser, we're gonna go ahead and measure it with the millimeter and it will tell us if it's a thousand millimeters, that's a actual 50 watt. So we've measured it and it is a thousand millimeters. So this is actually a 50 watt tube in here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a file in Lightburn where I'm gonna make lines just coming straight across, a bunch of different lines. I'm running that at, at all the same speed. We're gonna run them from eight, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80 power. And we're gonna watch the milliamps as it goes. At some point, it's gonna tap out on the milliamp I'm thinking around 18 to 20, and then we'll know our maximum power. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that file, and we're just gonna watch this milliamp over here with the camera so you can see what it does. All right, so that's how to install this milliamp reader into your laser. This will give you the proper output for that laser. We know now we wanna stay within 20 milliamps or below. One key thing we did is get a 30 milliamp reader. That way our resolution is higher. If we went with like a 50 milliamp reader, our resolution will be smaller and be harder to tell each individual line. So I suggest getting a 30 milliamp or lower, especially with the 60 watt. We know it's actually a 50 watt now that we measured it. So 30 amp below is perfect. Stick with an analog, that will show you real time and you don't have to connect power, another power line into it. If you get the digital one, you have to connect a five amp power. It's just a mess and it's actually drags behind so you can't monitor it in real time. This is one time where analog is gonna prevail over digital. Hope this helped you guys install this milliamp reader. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up Leave me any comments down below and please subscribe. I'll come back to you with more laser tips and tricks in future videos. Happy lasering.